Hi, in this video, we'll be learning how to write a recipe with Recipe Creator. More specifically, we'll be focusing on the Columns section. The Columns section is where you begin working on the selectors that will actually target the data you wish to extract. We did a previous video where we, were, uh, where we focused on the rows, which is, which is where you build um, different selectors to organize the data and structure your final output file. If this is your first video of Recipe Creator, I do recommend watching the rows video because that information is very helpful um, when it comes to building uh, most recipes. That said, if you're building a detail recipe, you can actually skip that video because rows are not uh, necessary for when you're building a detail recipe. So you can skip straight to the columns. Uh, so that said, let's go ahead and jump right into the columns. Um, for this video, we'll be doing the easy column finder and a little bit of the advanced finder for columns. Um, we will have a separate video that goes into advanced uh, selectors uh, for columns. So if you're interested, check out that video as well. Cool. So to begin building columns, you'll just simply click Add New Column. Um, and I'm just going to quickly go over the different types um, of different columns. So the scrape type is going to be the one you probably use the most frequently. It's what will allow this column to scrape data. And we also have a date type, which is where you will when you run your recipe, it will give you the date of the scrape. So as you can see right now, today is uh, June 21st, 2021. And then the, the constant type is if you were to wanted to keep like a consistent value in every output. Um, so if I just type test here in the keyword section, uh, you'll see now we have the word test for that will be available for every scrape. Um, and then finally, we have skip, which is where it'll just provide you with a blank column. Uh, this is more for like formatting if you need to make your data miner output um, in a particular order for when you upload it to the next uh, software you'll be working with. Cool. So for that, um, you can kind of play with them and see how it works. Uh, but we'll be focusing on scrape now. Um, more specifically, we'll be working on the easy column finder. And this works uh, just like the easy row finder. You'll simply click the button and it will turn your mouse into a magic wand. Uh, but first, you'll actually have to pick the type of data you want to extract. Um, so following these instructions, it will ask you if you want to be text, URL, image URL, HTML, text direct, or other attribute. Um, so to keep it simple, we'll start with just text. So uh, let's say we want to capture the person's name. So I'm going to hover over the person's name and then simply hit C on my keyboard. So now it looks like Dataminer found the data. Um, you can kind of compare it, see if it matches, and it does. So that looks good. So now we can hit to confirm. Cool. So now let's go ahead and give the column a name. Uh, let's just call it name. Um, but as you can see, there's also a little data button here, which we, I guess, reviewed with the, the types. But we can click on this little data button, and it'll show us a preview of what is being captured. So as you can see, we now have the people's names. So when we, when we run the recipe, we'll have this data available. Cool. So that looks good. Um, let's go ahead and do add new column and focus on maybe the next item. Uh, which is URL. So again, this will turn your mouse into a magic wand, and you'll have to kind of now uh, just um, do some assumptions and just say, uh, I, I believe the URL is going to be in the person's name, or you typically find them in the image. And uh, you can actually see in Chrome, um, they're going to provide a, a sample of the URL in the bottom left. So as you can see, we have a sample down there. So that is a good indicator that this will provide us with a URL. Um, so for data miner, we'll now Again, hover and hit C on our keyboard. Oh, wait, I have to change it to URL. And now we'll do hover and hit C. And as you can see, data miner found a URL. That looks good. So now we can hit to confirm. And again, we can check our data. And we have that information. Perfect. So we are moving right along. Go ahead and name this to URL. And let's do one more easy column finder. Um, so image URL, that's pretty straightforward. That will capture the image URL for the different pictures here. Um, HTML, also kind of straightforward. It will capture all the different pieces of data, but it will capture its true HTML rather than just the text. So you'll see some HTML code in your output if you were to use this. And then uh, so text direct, which is not the most straightforward. Um, text direct is going to be if you ever want to capture the top level element um, with an HTML meaning if you have an element that has some data uh, inside of it in individual kind of children elements. So as an example here, so if we do text direct and I hover and I 
if I hover and hit shift over, um, let's do industry, over the word software. Um, oh, actually I can't do shift because that's an advanced finder. Um, so essentially what this means is, uh, at least I can tell you in terms of the HTML. So this word software has a strong element, which is what makes it bold. And this strong element is inside a larger industry element, as you can see here. So the kind of highlighted color represents the different elements. So the software element is inside the word industry element. In text direct would essentially give us um, the industry element without the word software. So it's not totally useful for this scenario, but hopefully it still explains the process. So if I were to hover and hit C, you'll see now we're getting just the word industry because uh, it's leaving out the parent, or sorry, the child strong element. Cool, and then lastly, oh, let's go ahead and just reset this. The other one is other attribute. And uh, what an attribute is, is just simply the data within the HTML. Um, so the web page only ever shows you the text, but there is gonna be additional data in the HTML you can also capture. Uh, typically this is gonna be like a, an ID or a SKU maybe, something that you can find in the code, but it's not displayed as text. So if you ever wanna capture that, then you'll use other attribute. So if I were to hover over, for example, the person's image and hit C again, you'll see that it found, or a data miner or a recipe creator found a attribute called alt. Um, so this is just simply a piece of data telling me what type of picture it is. So it's a, it's a person in the picture. So you could choose this attribute and hit confirm and now we'll be extracting the word person, um, where in other scenarios, this could be a, a value that gives you the SKU or maybe um, some unique ID. Um, it's just an opportunity to get data from the HTML, not just the text. Cool, so we've gone through every, um, or we've pretty much gone through every easy column finder scenario. Uh, I'm gonna quickly go over the advanced settings now, uh, which is actually, um, let's call this um, other at, and to add new column for the advanced stuff. So the advanced settings uh, actually is gonna be kind of the same process. It's gonna be a combination of hovering and then you'll hit shift on your keyboard. So let's go ahead and do that now. And let's say we wanna capture the person's location. So let's give a, let's just say location for the name. We'll do scrape, uh, advanced settings. So here, rather than kind of selecting your um, different button, you can say from a dropdown, you want the text uh, text direct URL, the same type of options here, but uh, let's do text and then we'll click the green advanced finder button. Now, like I said, we'll take our mouse. We'll hover over the piece of data we want, which is the location. And then I hit shift on my keyboard. And now rather than having data miner or recipe creator automatically find the selector, it's now giving you the option to choose which one you want. So a selector is just simply a, a set or it's a piece of HTML data miner will use to reference the page and know what to scrape. Um, the website doesn't know you're using or choosing these selectors. Um, it's just a way for us to kind of read the page. So that said, it uh, looks like we have a class called location and an element called P. Uh, so recipe creator is going to provide you with uh, three recommendations. It will do elements, classes, and IDs. IDs are the most specific piece of uh, HTML. So it's typically only going to provide you with one piece of data. Um, a class is a little bit more generic, so you'll see them all over the place. Um, as you can see now, if I captured, if I use the, the location class, I'm capturing just the location, which is exactly what we want. And then there's the element tag, which is the most generic piece of a selector. And if I select that, you'll see it's using, uh, it's capturing data from all over. So typically uh, what you'll do is, as you build selectors, you'll kind of use a combination of these. Um, and over time, you'll kind of see how combining them can make your selectors more powerful. Um, but we'll have a separate video for that. For this video, I pretty much just want to highlight that um, you can choose your different selectors and kind of be more manual about the process. Um, if you are if you do the hover and shift process and you're not seeing a lot to work with, you can use the parent button. Um, that allows you to move up the HTML and gives you more options to choose from. So as you can see, I clicked the parent button and now I have a class called basic info, container style. So you can kind of do a little bit of trial and error as you go. And then finally, um, there's some other 
uh, tools here called siblings or uh, select a sibling. So this is going to be if you ever have a scenario where, um, so you have, for example, here we have a strong element. If I choose it, you'll see that's capturing multiple items, but there aren't any classes for us to choose from. So if you ever need to pick a selector based on its position, so uh, meaning I want to capture, for example, software, um, I'll have to say I want the third instance of that software or that word. So that's when you can use the sibling arrows here and just simply click the next button. So this will capture the first instance, which is the clearance, then the experience, and now finally the industry. And you can click these up and down as you need um, to kind of pick the right one. Cool. So that is good. So now we can hit confirm and we can review the data. So this is actually industry, not software or location. So at that point, you've pretty much kind of gone through the process of doing the advanced finder. Um, like I said, we'll have another video that goes into more advanced selectors. Um, we'll have that available um, on our recipe writing page. Um, I guess lastly, I do want to show you, uh, we have a menu here just for basic column stuff. So you can edit, um, you can duplicate your columns, you can move them up and down, meaning like the order. Um, you can always add a new column above, and then finally you can delete. Um, so that is pretty much it um, for the main columns uh, information. Uh, we'll have another video available for the advanced settings where we go more into the different kind of advanced selectors you can do. Uh, we'll also have another video for the nav, which is kind of the next step, uh, which is the process of um, having data miner visit and run through these different uh, pages at the bottom. So if you're interested, take uh, some time to look at that. And I guess thanks for watching this video and have a nice day.